Hey everybody, welcome back to lesson two, part two of the skull staining series, the course. Um, if you do not see the first video, I'll leave a link in the description to that video, as well as a link to the entire uh, set of videos. Uh, that'll be in the description. If you just wanna skip to that and watch them all at the same time, that is perfectly fine. Uh, tomorrow I will be posting uh, lesson three. Today is part two, so let's get into it. And uh, hope you enjoy, hope you learn a lot. And as always, please, just comment below if you have any questions, I'll definitely help you out. Welcome back, this is lesson number two and we are covering preparing the skull for staining. This is a very important step as it kind of lays the, uh, the base, the groundwork for the rest of the process. Many times you're gonna be getting skulls from kind of all over the place, you may purchase something off of eBay, you may get a raw skull yourself and clean it, a friend may give you a skull. So there's gonna be a wide variety or a variance of conditions of those skulls. So pretty much any skull that I get goes through the same process. I'm going to macerate it, even if it appears clean, I'm gonna put it in a bucket of water, see what happens, see if there's any remaining tissue on the skull, possibly uh, grease in the, in the skull as well. Uh, I'm going to degrease it, which is just warm water and dish soap. And then thirdly, I'm going to whiten it with hydrogen peroxide. I'm not using um, the high concentrate that you'll sometimes see. I simply use the 3% you can buy at the store. You don't really need a higher percentage than that if the skull is cleaned correctly. So the point is to kind of get all your skulls to the same level of cleanliness. That way the end result is more uniform because you're starting with a more uniform beginning. If you start out with a skull that's greasy, dirty, uh, not white, then that's gonna change the end result of how you stain those skulls. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. First, you're going to want to make sure that your skull is free from dirt and dust. This can affect, again, how it stains, how the um, stain soaks into the bone, and then just the overall color. What you're simply going to do is soak the skull in warm, soapy water. You may need to do this several times over a period of time in order to get all that uh, dirt out of the bone, but just be patient, it will help. Secondly, you are going to want to make sure that there is no tissue on the skull. This may seem obvious, but I get a lot of skulls in where people have boiled the skull or cleaned it, and it's hard to tell that there is actually uh, just a thin layer of tissue on that skull. So again, this goes back to the maceration process where I'm going to stick that skull in uh, a pail of water, and if there is tissue on the bone, it will rehydrate and I'll be able to see that. If there is tissue on the bone, simply go through the maceration process. Thirdly, if there is any grease in the bone, this is going to greatly affect how the stain um, soaks into, penetrates into the bone. Even with a surface stain, it is not the stain is not going to adhere to the skull correctly. Uh, in this example, I was putting on a leather stain and you can see it just was not penetrating into the bone and I could even just wipe it off with my finger. To degrease the skull, you are going to put the skull in hot, soapy water for a period of time until all that grease comes out. Simply use um, a dish soap, something like a Dawn dish soap. Number four, you are going to want to make sure there's no glue on the skull. Uh, this can kind of catch you off guard if you get a skull, it looks really nice and clean, but maybe the teeth have been glued in. And if you stain that skull, especially with a penetrating stain, it will show up around the teeth where the stain may not penetrate into the bone and you'll get you'll get a noticeable discoloration in the bone. Generally, what you're going to see is either Elmer's glue, um, a hot glue gun glue, or super glue. With Elmer's glue, all you have to do is simply soak that skull overnight in water. The Elmer's glue will turn white and you can just take like a toothbrush and brush it off. That's really no big deal at all. Super glue, you're going to soak the skull in acetone. So put it in a container, Soak it in acetone. Again, it may, it may need to be overnight or a few days. Just use extreme caution with acetone, just a side note, as it is very flammable. And the acetone will dissolve that clear coat. It is also very common to see hot gun glue on the skull. Generally, you're going to see it where they will um, glue the mandible together in the center, or they will glue the mandible to the cranium at the back here. Now, um, a lot, there's a lot of different solutions to get hot gun glue off of the skull, but I have found that simply soaking the skull in water, warm water overnight actually works really well. Now it's not going to do anything to the glue itself, 
but what it will do is it will take the connection of the glue to the skull and weaken that. So you can simply take it out of the water the next morning and peel off that glue because the connection of the glue to the skull uh, has weakened. Alrighty, so you've got a perfectly clean skull. There's no grease, there's no dirt, uh, there's no glue, there's no clear coat on it. Just a nice, clean skull. But what about the teeth? Well, the teeth are not actually a huge problem either. Um, you can stain the skull with the teeth in if you would like. And again, it just depends on the look you're going for. Some stains um, will stain the teeth more than others. For example, something like a walnut stain or a berry stain can stain the teeth. Now there's kind of two options if you do not want to stain the teeth. The first option is to coat the teeth in a layer of super glue. Now this is actually going to do two things. First off, it's going to prevent the teeth from staining. And then secondly, it is going to actually um, protect those teeth from cracking. Now cracking teeth can be a result of the difference, the changes of humidity. So if you purchase a skull from say um, out west and you're on the east coast, just shipping it from the west to the east coast will be a change in humidity and that change in humidity can cause those teeth to crack. So by having that layer of super glue on the teeth, you're not only preventing it from staining, but you're also protecting it uh, from cracking. The second option when possible is to simply remove the teeth. You can do this with a lot of smaller animals. If you just take the skull, put it in warm water overnight, that'll help um, soften up the bone and then those teeth will simply come out and then you can proceed to stain the skull. Alrighty, I hope you did learn a lot from today's video. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. I would love to see uh, whatever you're working on and what your thoughts are. Uh, comment below. And again, um, if you just want to see the entire series of the videos, click the link in the description of this video. I will see you tomorrow.